Yeah, first of all, let's reflect on uh, last night's one all draw against Halifax. Um, frustrating not to take advantage of the extra man in the end, but we seem pretty pleased with the, the way your, your sides um, compose themselves during the game going forward. I think so. Um, I think at the end, like dissatisfied with the result, but a lot of things to be satisfied about within the performance. So we create huge chances repeatedly, even with 11 men early on. Um, we have such big chances, like some that are crazy that we miss. I talked with Brins this morning about, I think it was almost an open goal and he slips just before he hits it. And, and we had the post twice, the bar, a couple of penalty shouts. Um, yeah, we have 29 shots. We, we And after the red card, they don't have any action in our final third the entire game and okay we don't quite get that final touch but I think that we can say across the board there was a lot of a lot of positive things as well to, to take from it yeah did it feel like it was just going to be one of those nights where it just where it just would not go in no matter how high you try no matter how many chances you create sometimes just luck goes against you and, and that was just one of those evenings it felt that way. It felt like it was just such small margins. You know, the keeper made a couple of great saves. It was the bar, and then it was the post, and um, things block shots. I mean, they, you know, I gave them credit yesterday for def the way they defended their box. They defended their box very well. Um, I almost didn't think it helped us having the man sent off because I thought we started the game so well and we created big moments. And they wanted to press as high. They left so much space that we we created big moments there. Once they went down to ten, they kind of just sat low. And accepted that we'd have the ball, um, and I thought in the the first half, if we'd have scored a few minutes before, we maybe would have gone and, and nicked a second before half time because we were in such a good flow. Um, but they reorganised a bit, and they just, you know, they they did what they needed to do to to take the point, and um, you know we have to respect that. But uh, yeah, the, like I said, a lot of a lot of good things as well that we'll take with us. Yeah. Uh, Eli Sand got your prize, of course, a well taken goal. He's certainly finding his form, isn't he? He is, yeah, and I think that's credit to him really because um he's just continually applied himself training wise and, and kept himself ready and developed as well. He's worked hard at his game, he's worked hard to understand the things that we want him to do. Um and I think he started to do them really well and now he looks a, a genuine a genuine goal threat on there for us, which is great. Yeah, it's at three goals and three for him. And like you say, he's had a real resurgence in your side. What, what else do you put that down to? I put it down to his application, really, his mentality, his work rate. Um, the fact that even though he was out of the team, and it's very easy to be out of the team and give up or um, stop working every day or stop doing the right things, but he's never at one moment come here. And it's not easy to come abroad and it not hit the ground running and then... Uh, but every day in training he works hard every day he does all the right things that he should do and that means that he d he continues to develop and then the, the, this has been the right moment for him to come in and I, I think everybody's pleased for him because they've seen the work he's put in Yeah, I guess it sets a good example for other players as well is when you do put the extra work in you work hard, you apply yourself ultimately you're going to get you're going to get an opportunity and it's up to the player to keep it there Yeah, I mean I've always tried to, to, and I learnt this early when I was managing out in Norway, that you, we never write a player off if they're working hard and they're wanting to be uh, wanting to be a part of the squad and they're doing the right things on a daily basis, then um, then I think it's really important that you never write them off the, and, and look for what they can give the team rather than not what they, the things that they can't do, look what they can give us and I think you can see what he can give us. So... Um, I think that's it's that's a, a big part of it is is believing that they're still going to offer us something and and I think that's a good message. Anybody that's out of the squad now, they're never written off. They're always part of our plans. If they work hard, there can be a an opportunity to come in and offer something. Yeah, we touched on it a, a couple of seconds ago. I always had to adjust to football in a different country. How how difficult is that as a player and also a coach as well, like, like you do? How difficult is it mm. um, to to adjust um, to to football in a in a different country, in a different climate? It, it's very difficult. I mean, everybody adapts in a different way, um, but there's a lot of cultural adaptations that people have to do when they go. Not just from... A, there's many lifestyle um, and things at home that you have to take care of, but also um, 
even from a, a football culture, there's different ways of training, different styles of football, and you have to adapt and learn a lot. Um, obviously, I've moved countries a couple of times myself, and I've moved a lot of players from place to place, and, and not everybody just comes in and hits the ground running straight off the bat. Sometimes it takes a year for somebody to really come into their own, and that goes for any signing. You know, we, we, we got signings, some hit the ground and they've flown, some are still working, but uh, that doesn't mean that they're not going to be able to offer something. They've just got to keep working away and, um, yeah, and, and over time they can adapt and, and be a part of the, the process. Yeah, what kind of factors do you have to consider when, when say, you're signing a player like an Eli Sam uh, over in this country to the, to the physicality of the National League? Well, I mean, he has no problem with the physicality because he's, <laughs> he's a big boy. <laughs> um, but he's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's more style of play. I mean, like, I, the the certainly the, the countries that he's, he's played in and a bit the same with Ruben and, and even where I've been coaching, the, the build-ups and the tactical bits are very different it's uh, maybe less high intensity and more tactical here it's very high intense you know the teams that you play against it's back to front fast and physicality so I think Eli has to, to cope with that but I also think we play in a way now that uh, he gets to learn his role within the team it's very clear um, and I think that helps him a bit with that yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, working at the weekend, uh, they've had a very tough start to, to 2022. What would be key to getting three points down there? I think when we talk about physicality and, and uh, the nature of those, they're a team that will come with a lot of that. They're very, very strong, physical, uh, very direct team, uh, strong on set pieces, and they are quite relentless in the way they play. They go back to front quick and they move the team up quick and they pick second balls and they're very, very aggressive um, and they do it very well. So they haven't started well, but we saw they came here and we for 70 minutes we had absolute control of the game and then in a, like an eight-minute crazy spell, we got caught with a couple of set pieces and um, we saw the threats that they can offer. Very can be a very difficult uh away team to go to they haven't started 2022 well but um, still I think that they'll be uh, hungry to try and uh, show themselves again yeah so it feels like they're, uh, they're slowly working towards once they get that that, ne that next win all of a sudden they could, they could go on a, on a bit of a run yeah they, they, I think anybody can really and, and you don't know what's around the corner in this league but I think you just need to gain a bit of momentum I think we have good momentum in terms of performance since the Grimsby game we consider Barnet Eastley Halifax away and then Halifax home I think performance level has been good we've just got to maintain that now um, but but Woking's a very very different prospect to, to perhaps what Halifax gave us in terms of uh, style of play so we just have to make sure that we're ready we adapt and, and uh, yeah we've got to make sure that we can cope with the physicality that they bring yeah, with that, with that said, is the emphasis um, uh, for Saturday sort of on the players to repeat last night's performance uh, and, and just be a little bit more clinical? Absolutely. I think if we can keep creating chances, that's the most important thing. You know, we 29 shots, I think, last night. So we create a massive chances. There was a massive chances against Eastleigh, a massive chances against Barnet. We, we're not having issues creating. We've just got to make sure that we take the goals in the right, in the right uh, moments of the game. And I think that's going to, of course, help us massively. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much for your time again, Ian, and yeah. uh, all the best. Down to work it. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, Thanks Jake. Thank you. Hi, Ian. Hi, Hi, Lee. You all right? Yeah, not bad. Are you? Good. Yeah. How did you? Uh, how did you sleep last night after after the game? Did you watch it back when you got back in? And, and what were your what were your thoughts on the performance as a whole? No, I didn't watch it. I watched some of it back this morning. I didn't watch it when I got in last night. I slept fine. Um, but it's, yeah, there's the same, like I, I watched the first half an hour back, I think, in fact the first half I think we're fantastic, I really think we play some brilliant football and I think you could just sense in the crowd like there was a, it was, the crowd was so behind us yesterday from the, the, the start of the game, I think we really brought an intensity to the performance and that was reflected um, and of course second half when they kind of accepted the draw and they sat really low it is difficult to break down but we got behind them a lot we created chances we had chances that we should of course take um, but the biggest thing for me was if I if I 
compare that directly to earlier in the season when we played against um, Torquay. They had an early red card and uh, they sat back to, to protect it. We really didn't create enough for the amount of ball that we had. We didn't get enough shots off. We didn't create enough chances. But I think when you look at it yesterday, we did do that. So, of course, we want to be better to take the chances that we create. But I think the most important thing is that we, we continually create them. I, I think I saw somebody last night say, if you play that game ten times, nine times out of ten, Notts County, Notts County win that. Is, is, is that a view that you would subscribe to? Yeah. Absolutely. I think I've seen like the breakdown of the game and the numbers and the chances and it's hard to fathom that we don't win that game based on, on that. But football also has a big element of randomness in there where it hits a margin where it hits the post instead of go in and it hits the bar instead of go in and keeper pulls off a save and you know Bryn slips instead of just connecting in that first one and these small details and when they happen several times in a game that's this is the consequence of it so really frustrating from that point of view but at the same time you have to go right if I if I just take the whole performance and, and say there's a lot of things we need to replicate again because they were good how, how were the players this morning, mood-wise? I mean, because I imagine that they would have been delighted with the performance, but obviously at the same time frust bitterly frustrated with the result. Yeah, I mean, always players, everybody's first emotion is about result, and that's normal because that's at the end of the game, that's the most important factor. Um, but at the same time, I think once that settles down, we have to go, OK, did we deserve that result? No, we didn't. We deserve to win the game, really. Um so there was an element that we were a little bit unfortunate and then I think we have to reflect on a lot of good performances from individuals in there and say look we we feel like we're moving in the right direction we can't let the fact that we don't win that game uh, we can't let it detract from the fact that we, we do a lot of good things so it's now about focusing on making sure we replicate those again consistently. Um, can I ask you about Adam Chickson? Because obviously his performance last night was, was absolutely sensational. And obviously I think there was a point in time where Adam, I think, had, had turned down a loan move to Barnet or, or Barnet were interested in him. He, he didn't move for whatever reason. But he seems in the last few weeks, or, or certainly in, in my opinion, not with the council much, is, is perhaps one of the most improved players at the club. And his performance last night seems to suggest he is coming into a very rich reign of form at a key time of the season. Yeah, I think the, 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 the also the switch to the back four has, has helped a little bit there. I think that um, he's, he understands that role really, really well. Uh, you know, back end of last season, he was left of a back three. I thought he was magnificent for us in there. Um, he adapted. He hadn't really done that role necessarily before, but he learned it quick and, and uh, he brought a lot of qualities to us. Now you just see... Uh, his energy that he brought on that left-hand side, the quality of the delivery was very high. Um, and another player that is just attitude-wise is is absolutely superb. Like every day, intense in training, focused, um, so professional, just so professional. And and you know he's really reliable. So happy that he's coming into that sort of form but again like I said uh, before about Eli the reason Eli's doing well is it's a product of his own training I think Chicks is the same it's a product of his daily work that, that means that he's um, playing so well Is he what you would call a manager's dream? Yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah absolutely because he um, yeah of course like low maintenance because he's he, he knows exactly what he needs to do to, to perform and and also He's a smart player, a very intelligent boy. So if you, if I'm, if I need to get a message onto the pitch, I know if Chicks is near, I can deliver it, and he can help perfect things on the pitch. So um, I think everybody in the group sees him as a, a positive leader. Mm. Um, I, I, can I can ask you about Joel Taylor and, uh, and Alex Lacey because obviously they were not on the on the bench on on Tuesday night. Was that down to injury, or is it just through squad selection? Just squad selection. Um, it's hard, you know. We only have five subs. Everybody's fit. You just mentioned Chickson's been brilliant. Um, that's how it is. Like Joel is a good football player and he's played well for us. But um, it's hard to uh, pick a bench when you only have five. Uh, we have to think about the type of game it's going to be and who might need to come in or out during the game. 
Um, and you know, when somebody comes in and plays well, we changed to a four. I used Brins as a centre back, and I thought Brins has done it unbelievably well. And yeah, of course, then it means that there's got to be a little bit of rotation, and that's tough for those players that are not in. But one one thing I'd say is that the lads' attitudes are great. They work hard every day. They keep pushing the group, and that means that it, it, things will change before the end of the season. I'm sure about that. You know, lots of games, quick succession. Uh, means that those players need to be ready and, and we know that they've got qualities for us. Mm, and it's interesting because I, I know we've, we've spoken about players being linked with football league clubs, but I see today that you're in the bookies running for the Peterborough job now as well as well as Bradford. So, you, yeah. okay. so it's, is, it, is this, I'm trying to put this in a positive spin because surely to me it's a reflection of how good the work is at Notts County that you that these things occur, isn't it? You know, players only get linked with football league clubs if they're doing well. It's the same with, same with managers. I guess so. I mean, that's the first I've heard about that. But um, twenty to one, just to just to uh, let you know. Okay, okay, save your money. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like you say, I, I I don't pay it too much attention. But if that's a link that's there it's presumably because people think that something that you're doing there is good and correct and um, I just work hard every day, enjoy my work and and uh, do my best and that's all I do and then if I end up on the bookies odds then um, that's probably good for the bookies. <laughs> is, is it flattering to be linked with those kind of jobs though? I mean because obviously you've come in and you've, you've taken knots to eight and I think your record is your win percentage is something like fifty percent or something like that. So, I imagine it, it must feel nice to be recognised in such a way. Um, yeah, uh, the most important thing is that the the owners here think I do a good job and that the players like the work that I do and um, yeah, the, the stuff around. That's the most important thing. Of course, it's nice if people think that you're doing a good job and the work that you're doing is is recognised. That's always great. But uh, most important people are the people closest around in the club that they think that um, and uh, hopefully they do um, I was going to ask you about the, the group as a whole I know it was, you, you just spoke about Adam Chickson and his level of quality in terms of how he handles himself in training every single day it strikes to me that you've got a very good group in, in that sense fantastic group really fantastic group so hungry to learn want to improve push each other um, positive group quite a young group really when you look across the, the board there's not lots and lots of senior players um, so some young lads have to take some responsibility in there which they do um, really enjoyable group to work with just think they're um, yeah a, cre a credit to the club so look I know that we, we talk about these things we're not exactly where we want to be in the league but there's a long long way to go um, a lot of points to fight for and and uh, I think we've just got to keep focusing on, on improving and I think the players want that because they want to get better, then uh, certainly makes my job easier. Uh, it's funny because I know we had a conversation about this, I think a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about teams at the top. I think Dagenham were up there early on, Grimsby were up there, Chesterfield were up there, and I think they've lost four, they've four games without a win yeah. now. So it just goes to show you how quickly the season can change in a, in a, in a matter of a couple of weeks. Yeah, we. I mean, we were flying through, weren't we? I mean, we had some really, really good results and we were looking like we were going to be up and around it. Then we had a couple of cancellations and then a couple of poor results and suddenly it was like, oh, we're miles away again now. But we looked at it and we thought, you know, we're only just past the, the halfway point, really. Um, there's still a lot of games and a lot of points and a lot of things can happen. And um, some squads are not huge and one or two key injuries. You see, you know, Chesterfield, of course, is. Uh, it was really unfortunate with... Tishmanga's injury um, and he's been a massive player for them and you, you can't legislate for that that's now something that they have to, to, to cope with and that can happen and, and change the whole climate of what's going on so we, we have to focus really on ourselves and, and keep trying to be the best each game that we can be and then other teams can have little slips and problems and, and that can open the door so we've just got to stay with it Brilliant and, and finally for me uh, Zach Brunt how is he today? He was all right, yeah. Uh, he trained. Uh, he felt okay to train. We we kept him away from any contact, but uh, we'll check him now after the session. But he seemed all right. It was just a bit of a big hit at the time, and I think sometimes you've got to have a bit of precaution with those things. So he came off as a matter of precaution, but uh, didn't hasn't shown any other signs that he's got concussion. So hopefully he's okay. <laughs>